company and start talking about their decisions and think that there's not going to be any uh, disciplinary action uh, per se. So in that aspect, I think she kind of put herself in that position unknowingly. I don't think she meant to say it in that manner, but I think she was trying to let people know, like, hey, if you have an issue with these these teams, with uh, people trying to make these players stand, this is how you this is how you deal with the issue. Don't don't patronize them. Don't sponsor. Them. Don't buy none of the products that 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 will um, that will spend money on these organizations. Don't do it. And then when you start doing that and you hurt an organization's pockets, then that's when they listen. And she's right. Because that's what you have to do. I mean, you look at any boycott, any protest that has happened, you know, not just just protesting didn't help. You have to start affecting their bottom line. You got to start affecting their, their money. You got to hit their wallets. Once you start hitting people's wallets and they start losing money, then that's when they start listening. Because now you're messing up their livelihood. And it shows them, they're like, hey, your livelihood is just as important as my livelihood, too. So right. um, I, I commend her for her comments. But I knew the I knew the, I knew the suspension was coming after she made my life. Oh, she hit hard right there. <laughs> yeah, she came yeah. with it. Now but the suspension me, was coming right after. Let me let me read a couple of comments here. We got that ninja in the chat room. Shout out to him. Also, Tiffany Poodles in Portland in the building. Uh she said uh well that ninja says, I'm curious as to why the Jamel Hill topic always centers around where uh what comments with bad comments or not, her employees uh, were wrong. Point blank, it should be the base of the conversation, in my opinion. Um, also, he says the Four Letter Network is a racist network that supports a racist president and the killing of black people. That's pretty much it. The validity of the suspension is irrelevant. And I think in this in this whole situation, I think like you said, Jamel Hill is is a casualty and. And similar to Trump, I would say this, similar to Trump, it seems like ESPN uh, is, is picks on the like a battle that that they think they can win. Um, you, you don't see and for and Berman, I'm kind of going to go back in, in time a little bit. But Berman, if you remember him, there was audio from him basically cussing out colleagues. Uh, people didn't like um, can't remember his first name right now, but people didn't like Berman at ESPN. But nothing actually happened to him. No, he didn't have a Twitter account. But you look at they and, and they didn't want to go after him because he was at ESPN for so long. So I think there's a lot of of things in this. Um, but I, to me, again, I'm gonna say this: the, the tweets were not. I, I think she just she put a suggestion. She basically put like a suggestion box in the chat in on Twitter, and people did all the work for her. She didn't have to put the sponsors in there. She didn't have to put all the other information. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I just, I think uh, she's going to come back and she's not going to, she's not going to sit back. Jamel Hill, I appreciate her uh, greatly, but they're going to continue oh. to do what they're doing. And then also another part of this, um, Michael Smith, actually, I think he stepped out that first show that she was, she was off. Uh, I don't know how that actually went. I'm not able to catch sports center six, um, but I'm curious to see how how this is going to go further, but I don't see Jamil Hill backing down at all. Yeah, I don't, and, and she shouldn't. I don't think she should. Um, I, like I definitely appreciate her because she's using her platform. As we all, like, most African Americans, ask that you know people who are in position of power to use their platform to stand up for those who don't have a voice. And I think Jamil Hill has done that. I think there's NFL players who've done it. There's NBA players who've done it. There's a lot of people who are more consciously aware today than there was uh, 40 or 50 years ago when you were trying to get into the sports and it was dominated by majority white people and you were scared to use the platform. I think today we have a lot more people who are willing to use their platform. And I definitely appreciate uh, that and, and those players speaking on these things. Um, because it does start the conversation, it does uh, it does influence our youth, it does uh, inform our youth, which I think is extremely important for them to be informed. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate that, and I don't think that again, I don't think that her comments were meant to be inflammatory. 
I don't think that her comments, uh, I, th I think her comments were really meant to say, hey, like, here's something that you can do. She was giving ideas and suggestions to people. I think people took it and ran with it. But again, your sponsor, your 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 employer, your employer is not going to going to like suggestions given that might affect their bottom line, right? right. And, and 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 you know, it's like you know, it's like you saying, hey, if you don't like ESPN, go watch Fox. You know what I'm saying? If she would have said that, they'd be like, no, 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 no. You don't like ESPN, and we need to do something else to get you to like ESPN, right? <laughs> like, you know, it was similar to that to that aspect, and so. Um, and so, you know, like I said, I saw the punishment coming. Um, I, I definitely think I hope she comes back uh, with a vengeance um, and, and, and really handles her business. Um, and, and I appreciate, like, Michael Smith and all those other uh, anchors who have been there constantly supporting her and being like, yo, y'all not going to just dog her out like this. We still here with her. We're going to help her through this thing, uh, period. So you got you got you got to appreciate that. Um and, you know, and like I say, I mean, I think at this point it's up to the public to really start taking a stand and start helping these these individuals who do have platforms who are speaking out for us. We got to do our part now to, to make sure that we can continue to push this fight on. Exactly. Exactly. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you always for coming on. Love having Tyon Mack on the show. Go find him on Facebook, T Y J U N Mac. He's always in the uh, on Facebook and chatting in the real NBA talk group. So appreciate you for coming on talking about some topics from this week. Oh, no problem, man. Uh thank you for having me on. Looking forward to uh a good college game tonight uh today. I want to see this Miami game. Uh and then get ready for the basketball season. It starts in three days, man. Three yes. days. Whoop is back. Yes, yes. We'll be we'll be definitely the next show. It'll be a, a hoop show uh, from top to bottom so we'll be talking about some stuff to talk about on the next one have a good one man all right take care all right that was my man tyon mack love to get his thoughts on everything going down from the week nba is back um sluggo says always enjoy mack he should be a permanent co-host sir you're right you're right man he lives in california it's been, it's been, if he was here or if I was there, we would definitely be doing this every week. We'll have to figure something out. But yeah, man, we go back since the fifth grade. So uh, that's, that's my brother. Uh, even though I don't have any brothers, biologically, that's my brother. So, man, appreciate uh, everybody. So we're going to talk about these college football matchups. We got Texas OU going down today. Uh, it's going to be crazy at the Cotton Bowl. Uh, that's going to be uh, one of the games. Georgia Tech, Miami, like uh, Michael Bella mentioned in the chat room. Also, we got USC versus Utah, another game. And um, Michael Bella, man, you, you came with, with a comment that, that caught my eye. I truly think that we may see Jamel Hill at Fox Sports 1. It, it's, it's a possibility. The way this is, the way this is going down the road that this is going they the, the Jamel Hill may part ways with ESPN or vice versa and and Fox Sports 1 would would jump on that they would jump on that opportunity so give a shout out to Clutch Talk Sports podcast I was actually on his show this past uh, Friday yesterday uh, it was a great show had a lot of great topics and I uh, was very, very appreciative to get on uh, Clutch Talk Sports. So, real quick, I wanted to touch on the money is continuing to flow in the NBA. You got Joel Embiid getting broken off. Also, Wiggins. Um, so, I'll get back to that in a minute. We got our next guest up on the line. My man, Larry B. with IE Sports Radio. What's going on, Larry? Hey, what's going on, Ben? Thank you again for having me on the show. Oh, definitely, man. Always great to get your knowledge in college football and sports, period. But we got a couple of big ones for today. The Red River rivalry, Texas versus OU. Both of these teams show up. It doesn't matter if they're 0-5 or whatever it may be. They come into this game ready to play. 
Um, also, let me plug, IE Sports Radio is on Spreaker, so go check that out. A lot of great shows, a lot of great content. Uh, but Texas versus OU. Um, kind of what's your, your thoughts on this game with OU being ranked, Texas not ranked, having a lot of issues, uh, you know, last year, also this year. Um, but what's your thoughts breaking down this game? Uh, really, Ben, you know what? Uh, the best part about this game is the fact that it's been around for so dang long. It's just one of those rivalries. It's not something that just, you know, began over the last 50 years in a sense. This is just one of those really OG rivalries. I mean, this thing has been played. I talked about this last night on 3 and Out on iSports Radio. I mean, this has been played since 1900. So, I mean, you take a look at this game and how far the history has gone back. And I love, <clears throat> I love the fact that uh, – <clears throat> sorry about that. I love the fact that I have this – I mean, that you have these long periods of winning from both sides. And then the last couple of years, Ben, the best part about this is – it's gone back and forth since 2013. Texas winning 36 to 20 in 2013, 2014. Oklahoma wins it 31 to 26. Um, in, te- in 2015, Texas wins it. I believe this was Max Strong's last big, like crazy, big victory in the Red River rivalry. But correct me if I'm wrong. It was 24 to 17. And then just last year, Oklahoma 45 to 40. So you couldn't be more right. Looking at all these scores uh, for the majority of it, they just. It's always a battle. Now, some of them were in, indeed blowouts, but in the last couple of years, it's just, it just seems to be more restored to that. doesn't matter what the record is, ranking, and none of that. So, uh, really, Ben, the best part about this game today is the fact that both of these teams have seen struggle. Texas has had this, man, you know, starting off the season when they would uh, just be you know, just demoralized by this Maryland Terps team. We talked about that uh, a couple weeks ago here on the, on the BSG Sports Show. And, you know, Texas couldn't, they couldn't hold in that game whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, what happens? Oh, they lose. Then they play SC. And, of course, my team, a very tough battle there. Uh, I'm just going to be honest, Ben. I thought we'd win that one a little bit more, uh, you know, more decided than that one. But it didn't matter. Texas came to play. They fought us hard. We went to overtime. It was a great battle. We won it, though. And you can just see here, looking at Texas, you know, their track record this year, they've had some tough times. Some people were saying, oh, well, you know, why were they even ranked in the first place? Because they're a good team. They produce good players from last year. We've seen Foreman. That's now a part of the Texans. I mean, this team is a good team since they don't have, you know, all the pieces just yet. And for Oklahoma, this team got knocked out last year early by the uh, by the Ohio State Buckeyes. And then this year, they went up there to the shoe and returned the favor. But unfortunately for them, well, they would lose quite the nasty one. A, uh, you know, a few weeks last week, that is. And, you know, Oklahoma, they just kind of, well, sometimes you just kind of, you kind of just bite the bullet. And it's kind of crazy, man, because I remember talking about Ohio, uh, Oklahoma State and Iowa State. I remember saying a couple weeks ago here on the show that Iowa State is that team to kind of watch out for. They knocked out Oklahoma State in 2000 and I believe 10, 2011, and then years later in like 2013, 2014, they did it again to Oklahoma State. And what do you know? Oh, oh, Iowa State strikes again. They did it. And every couple of years, they pull off some kind of big victory, and they did it. But this time, it was to Oklahoma as they knock out OU. And, you know, I mean, it was the craziest upset. But, hey, Big 12 is the Big 12. And, well, there's a rivalry game that was certainly uh, won by the team that was better that day. So when it comes down to a bit, this game just has so much because both teams have just been struggling. They, you know, and one, maybe not OU so much, but Texas has so much built-up aggression. OU, if you, if you don't think they have built-up aggression after that Iowa State loss, then I don't know what you think. <laughs> <laughs> they but, definitely uh, do. They do, you know. So, Ben, really, in closing, um, this game to me is without a doubt going to be one of the best games, not just of of the week, but probably of this entire month. Listeners, I advise you, if you're not going to be home for this game, please hit your DVR. It, it, and if you have somebody at home that you're not home right now, call them and please tell them to record this game for you because <laughs> this is going to be a great game. I love this game. Ben, you, you're actually you're in the area. You know all about this robbery. I mean, really, uh, what are your thoughts? And, and really, what do you... What are you really, really feeling deep down in this game? I'm expecting Texas to actually get the win. I think they don't like – in this rivalry, no one likes to lose, period. 
Um, Texas is three and two. 